Yeah, I want to talk about the CloudStack at Intelligence Brownfield. So we will use CloudStack as, as a platform for our hosting environment. We do already in a not so, so, so big environment for, for classical for classical infrastructures, more cloud-like infrastructures, but we are more or less a SAP hosting company and we also want to use CloudStack as basis for our SAP services out to the customer. Yeah, I put a small agenda mainly about me, beginning with me in that, in that case. I am with Intelligence since ages, 1998. So I've started uh, as classically everyone at Intelligence is starting as an SAP consultant or an SMP ad administrator, basis administrator. Later on, I'm, I'm focused more or less on everything what is related to area networks, no matter if it is local, wide areas or, or storage area networks and dive deeper into infrastructure. And, now we, and nowadays I'm doing infrastructure architecture. I'm also doing sports sometimes from an, on a private level. So uh, yeah, everything what is about biking and maybe also in the winter time threading um, uh, down slopes with everything which has a steel edge equipped with. <laughs> so yeah, the intelligence itself uh, is founded 89. Um, yeah, have some, some kind of employment, mainly is doing SAP businesses, uh, consultancies as well as, as hosting. Um, we are, in 2018, we are nearly in, in, in 1 billion uh, uh, revenue company, now we are. Uh, so last year we, we, we checked this and, and now we are uh, doing uh, businesses with, with, with more than 1 billion uh, revenue. So, yeah, something from the marketing. You may see our vision is to, uh, to deliver power, uh, powerful SAP solution to the world. And therefore, we are maintaining a, 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 a complex IT department and we are trying to, uh, to get into the newer cloud-like features uh, we want to use. Uh, from from the cloud stack. So now we will start with the environment. Uh, you may already know uh, from previous talks from from Sebastian maybe that we are having already a cloud stack based environment uh, deployed, uh, more or less on 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 open source components like K KVM and Ceph. and we've built up an infrastructure with an with an extra portal with some surrounding services, having CloudStack in here, uh, managed by, by, by Ansible scripts and playbooks. And we all get the data back to the UE portal to, to have the customers as accesses and also doing the same things as we normally want to have on the cloud management portals and everything like that. And our mission would be to uh, to extend this infrastructure to a more, uh, to, to a bigger environment, which I need to talk about now. That's uh, VMware based. We are managing more or less nearly 5,000 hosts or uh, VMs at the moment. We have deployed in partly automated process for the VM deployment, which is more or less based on an, on an uh, workflow infrastructure not really a, a portal-like as we, we want to implement now, but yeah, it works for us, us now. It's, um, the main points are that this is not, um, yeah, it's highly customized and optimized for, especially for, for managing SAP infrastructures. If, you, if some of one may know, SAP HANA has some, some special requirements regarding storage, regarding uh, the compute power and also for memory and things like that. So uh, we, we have two data centers which are DWDM coupled. So we are maintaining and stretch layer two uh, approach on, on that level to fulfill some kind of uh, yeah, disaster recovery and, as, and also high availability, high availability uh, solutions for that. Uh, and the customer virtual machines are connected mainly to, to two networks, which is called the front end or the customer VPC-like. 
which is uh, classical VLAN based on our switch infrastructure with IPv4 as an, as an IP addressing scheme. And we are also having a backup internal high bandwidth network, uh, which is based on PVLAN. That is private VLAN, that's an extension to, a, to some kind of VLAN. And we are using IPv6 in that environment. Uh, just for high, yeah, high pentness uh, data transfers, mainly backup and restore, but also other things from, from for transferring high, high volume, uh, high volume data transfers. So, some of the figures we already have implemented on that level. We have roughly uh, 400 ASXi hosts in the data center, managed by 16 on or more V centers. Uh, each each V center has more or less uh, some clusters deployed to it, so at least we have 64 clusters for that. We are half a better byte of RAM in our data center and things like that. These are the, the main figures we want to, which is our brownfield. We want to to put into and manage cloud stack environment. Some yeah, some more words about the network. I think this. This picture will be uh, uh, larger in the in the next slide, and I uh, I will explain some some words about this there. So we have a yeah we have an, 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 an a network infrastructure. We call it customer virtual networks, which is more or less based on a layer three uh, layer three layer three interface on on forty gate VDOMs. Uh, all the things are connected to this Fortinet VDOMs, uh, VDOMs as, for example, internet accessibility, as well as uh, the classical WAN networks, which the customers is accessing the, the virtual machine in our data center. Uh, I already told you we are using you are using stretch VLAN between the data centers, and we are also using in stretch PVLAN on the on the uh, on, on the backup interfaces. For compute, we have these 16 vCenters already running around. We want to migrate these vCenters to, 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 to a smaller number to have it uh, more manageable via cloud stack. So every vCenter goes into one cloud stack zone at the moment. I think that's normally known for, for you. Uh, we have these uh, clusters. We have different kind of clusters within this vCenter running. So one of the, the clusters are more or less workload optimized. So we, we distinguish between uh, large memory databases or in-memory databases, like uh, for example, uh, Subhana. We also have some, some um, clusters with some, some different kind of CPU to memory ratio for compute. Uh, especially for the application servers in the in the SAP environment, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's also uh, needed to have some license cost optimizations. You may also know that, for example, Oracle is, is licensing on the on the whole count of sockets for for its V V center, and therefore we have some some smaller V centers together with some clusters especially for, for hosting Oracle databases in the SAP environment in that level. Yeah, and from the storage side, we have different vendors, but all are more or less classical block storage. Uh, the latest new systems are all flash, but we have, have also tiered storage in the, in the environment, and we are using classical data stores in the VM environment, so no but but are planning it to to extend it to in vivo uh, based infrastructures or experimenting with vzan in 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 opposite to Ceph on 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 these sap based environments yeah that is normal it's a larger picture if someone want to have it explained it in detail so maybe you can t raise your hands if you want no Everything is clear for you. <laughs> okay, what is the mission? So we want to migrate the vSphere managed landscape into CloudStack. So there would be still a vSphere or an, an, an vCenter underneath, but we don't want it to have it accessed directly as we now do in the future. And therefore, we are um, th uh, thought about what, how to how to achieve this. So, 
uh, yeah, we have these network issues, which makes, uh, which was the first thing we, we thought about. Uh, so we have this. In cloud stack there is a future L2 network, so we don't want to have the whole cloud stack, uh, cloud stack infrastructure with this uh, system with the machines deployed on on the brownfield, and therefore we want we still want to use the uh, VDOM based uh, firewall based uh, infrastructures on 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 this brownfield. Each vCenter goes into one uh, cloud stack zone uh, on the existing layer two infrastructure, so we need to. Uh, have each layer two or each uh, VLAN in each uh, cloud stack zone because the underneath network is still flat. And for that to do, uh, we need some, or we, we urgently need some uh, two features. One is the community PVLAN uh, uh, extensions for the distributed V switches. There is already, as I, as, as I learned, there was some uh, public or promiscuous as well as, as uh, how is it called? Yeah. It's isolated community network, uh, isolated uh, PV line and uh, support and cloud stack. And we, but we needed community VLANs because each customer has the same community VLAN to, uh, to, to also allow connections over the backup network or uh, communications over the backup network. And of course, we don't want to uh, uh, export and import the virtual machines. We want to import them into cloud stack managed virtual machines. On that level, uh, further points we need to tackle are alternative way to manage the DR. Uh, currently, we are using SRM or uh, uh, VMware shared cluster environment based on on a feature from Hitachi Vantara arrays, which is called uh, Global Active Device. And yeah, and we need to find a way to manage cloud stack controlled and vCenter manage VMs in parallel. So that is one of the points we want to. To, uh, we are discussing currently, so we are need to decide be be between did you say, uh, de dedicated vCenters or dedicated clusters or a full mixed environment. And that, on, on that level, you may know, especially for the SAP business, which is more or less a uh, yeah, point of, of very large and, and complex risk evaluation regarding to the, to the clients, because mostly all of their of their businesses is relying on unstable running SAP systems. Uh, we, uh, we we try to uh, to put the client services at the lowest risk we could we could achieve on on, on that level. Yeah, some words about the VLAN. So I'm not sure if you are all familiar with with private VLAN concepts, which is documented from Cisco in the RFC 5517. Uh, so it extends the classical VLAN to a primary VLAN and have a secondary VLAN assigned to 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 support and. You can build up some 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 fancy uh, communications uh, based on a layer two uh, network interfacing. So there are two different or three different ports config available, which is promiscuous, which could could talk to everything, isolated, which also uh, which only can talk to promiscuous ports and community ports, where community ports can talk to each other in. Or there is com communication on community ports in the same community VLAN, as well as to promiscuous ports, of course, to have some some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, yeah uh, shared service available, especially for the backup in environments, for example, the the media agents or yeah tapes and things like that. So for that uh, we uh, reached out to CloudStack or nay to Shape Blue, not to CloudStack, sorry. <laughs> To, uh, to have it extended in, in that level, and we would we will get or we we got a, a new feature which is called uh, PVLAN Community, which is accessible uh, via the API on the or the create network API call based on the isolated PVLAN type like uh, uh, equal community, and which is also available in the. <laughs> <laughs> Enemies under attack is loaded. <laughs> yeah, and therefore, you, you will have an, a new uh, secondary isolated VLAN type in that level, that, which is community, and you can put in the, the, VLAN, uh, the, the VLAN as well as a secondary isolated VLAN IT in the, in the, in the GUI as well. You can also use uh, the great uh, network API 
And what you will get on the, on the vCenter environment is that uh, CloudStack is generating <laughs> with the first virtual machine which is using this network, uh, uh, cloud guest, uh, private VLAN, secondary VLAN, uh, TV, uh, port group on the, D on, on the right P D uh, uh, distributed virtual switch and which is assigned to this community as a community VLAN on, on private VLAN port 63 and, and uh, secondary VLAN on that level. Okay. Some, and some word of the ingestion, which, which is also necessary, is uh, currently we have two API calls uh, for that. It's one is list unmanaged instances, which is uh, uh, directly accessing the, the VMware infrastructure or the vCenter for the, for the right cluster ID, which needs to be set up first. And lists are currently not managed VMs in, in that environment. And the second API call, which uh, is actually importing the unmanaged instances into the, into the CloudStack environment. What we need further will be an export managed instance uh, in case, uh, because we have some, some special cases where we need to, to uh, uh, stop CloudStack having uh, to manage the instance so that we can do some fancy thing on, an, on a lower level on, on that because of some, some of our normal procedures need that. So for that, we, you need to set up a new project yet and you need to, to create that VVLANs uh, already there, as well as everything you want to import later on. Uh, so for the import unmanaged instance, there are some, some parameters necessary to, to hand over to the API. One, of course, one is the cluster ID, which means which is the VMware cluster you want to import in. Uh, the name of the, the, uh, the VM, of course, uh, some special parameters, the host name will be set to the name if it is not set. There are some tenant and project configuration parameter in which of this tenant project infrastructures from the cloud stack you want to import this, this, this VM. And more on the technical level, you will need a template ID or you can leave out the template ID and name and, and use the, the uh, how is it called? Oh. There is an, 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 an template. I, uh, there is a template already offered by CloudStack, which is not, which you can use for 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 not so. Oh, on this is it is a curated constraint. The second no, constraint uh, template ID. You uh, of course you need to assign some service offering so that CloudStack needs to have uh, needs to know what what kind of configuration yeah of, that, that is the costume constraint and template id you need to you, you can use but you can also define templates and and use this id for especially for importing them uh, and you from the service offering you can use uh, you, you do not uh, need to uh, apply one, but you can also use a fixed compute offering, for example, if you want to do that. Uh, you need to uh, 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 say CloudStack what kind of diff offerings you are importing from this virtual machine. Uh, so for that, there is a mapping from the disk ID to the current offering. Uh, you need to map the, the, the networks from the virtual machine to the, to the cloud stack networks, of course, and everything which is uh, followed up. And you can also assign IP addresses or you can use auto assigned IP addresses in case you are importing it in non layer 2 network offerings, because layer 2 network offerings do not have uh, or do not manage the IP addresses of the corresponding virtual machines or instances in that level. Uh, because everything is managed outside of CloudStack and, and, and on that level. Yeah. Once you have imported it, there are, uh, and you stop and start the virtual machine uh, from CloudStack, all properties will be controlled by CloudStack furthermore and will change during a startup of the virtual machine. The network itself will be assigned directly while importing the virtual machine in that level. 
And yeah, and there's one constraint uh, that console access will, all, will only work if you stop and start it at the imported VM from, from, uh, from cloud stack. So I um, was very fast on that level. So if you want, I can also, I have prepared some kind of an, an uh, what is it called? Demo. Uh, a demo, yeah. <laughs> You will see uh, the cloud stack en environment. We will import these virtual machines. Here are the current templates. We want to use this SLS SP4 old template for importing it. We have defined. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, of course it is. We have, we have also defined the, the front-end network and the backup network I showed you before. There are some storage uh, offering already uh, defined and, and all that things. Uh, you will see this is a VMware environment we are using for importing it. So I have a test. Uh, virtual machine which is called API VTST uh, uh, 2 in that case that is the data stores connected to I would propose that if, if we take a look at the configuration uh, yeah it has an IP address it has it, it's an SUSE SLS uh, enterprise <coughs> server or an, an enterprise server have some kind of IP addresses are going to have two TV, uh, CPUs and eight gigabyte of RAM and and things like that you can take a look at this uh, unmanaged instance from the from the cloud monkey interface command line interface for for that virtual machine uh, Therefore, you will see some, some of the <coughs> parameters of the virtual machine as VMware is reporting by the API call for that. So you have the adapter type, you have the ID of the network adapter, which needs to be a, it's the same as in, when importing it. You have a, 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 a host ID as well as two, uh, two disks. One is the root disk for with, with, with capacity and the, the relevant uh, controller a data disk from a uh, size 16 gigabyte. And of, in case you want to import import it, We need a fancy import string. <laughs> oh, sorry, it, it was a little bit too fast. Here it is. Yeah, every parameter we will get, uh, we, we will um, we will need for important is is uh, right here. You need to define or find out the, the the IDs from CloudStack for all that things. The cluster ID, the, the project ID we want to implement it, the template ID of course we want to use a template. We've defined the name, the, the display name as well as the host name on that level. The service ID from the service offering, the diff disk offering ID for the root disk as well as the disk offerings from the data disks uh, or for this one data disk and also the, the uh, NIC uh, having it imported and you fire and if you want uh, if you fire up it so you will get this what do you need to change the ID of yeah the disk offering ID is currently not the right one because I have copied the virtual machine so, therefore, we need to find out. Uh, oh, sorry, ah, it seems to be a little bit too complex for doing it now. But <laughs> what? 
to be image pass. Uh, it's So now I have corrected the disk offering. It is now 8.47 since uh, instead of 8, 8.46 and now it should work. Sounds good. And if you check it on the cloud stack level. We will have this instance imported. Of course, no IP address is assigned to it. It's still running. And now you can control it from 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 cloud stack for example stop it yeah we take some time you will see it in the in the VMware environment so it's a virtual machine is an invalid state. No, it isn't. So OS shutdown will, will, will be forced and therefore it will take some time to, uh, to stop this virtual machine and once it is stopped you can also restart it. <coughs> no, not that way. Still stopping. You will see it on, on cloud stack level as well. Take some time maybe, but trust me, it will work. <laughs> and uh, the configuration will change a little bit because the, the templates will not exactly match the current as uh, the, the original running virtual machines. Uh, but yeah, f for, for that to make sh uh, to make it work for us, you will need to to have the um, the right templates for for working with. Or you can also migrate it during importing this virtual machine. For example, if you want to have an, an, an to have a, a different service of our offering on the cloud stack environment. Got a minute or two if you have any questions. Any questions, yeah. Andre? Any questions? So, over a minute, maybe. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>